Hi, Best Buds. It's Kathy with Kathy's Garden, and I'm happy to see you here. Today is hashtag Kathy Sewing Happiness, in which we'll have our drawing at the end of the video. But first, let's have our shout out to Wanda, Liberty Lost, Teresa, Kelly, Connie, and Jamie. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm going to set this aside. We'll have a drawing at the end. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a six by six inch paper pad and we're going to be making some different ephemera. Today we're going to make this envelope junk journal. Isn't it absolutely adorable? So we have a closure of sorry silk, a little bit of lace on the the envelope flap, some wax here to hold the sorry silk in place as our closure. If you don't have any wax or you don't have a wax sealer, that's okay. You could use a button, you could use a silk flower, you could use just a circle punch. So you can use whatever you have to hold your sorry silk in place. I've just chosen to bring out the wax sealer. Now this electric sealy, sealer wax, the one that melts the wax, I've done a video just featuring this product right here. So if you're interested in this, um, just scroll and check out this video. So let's go ahead and let's look inside here. So inside, we've got our little flap in which you can journal on. I did stamp my envelope. And then I've got a little piece of ephemera in here that you can journal on as well. And there's quite a few sheets in here. There's one, two, let's see, three, four, five, six. So there's 12 little pieces of paper in the journal. And there's pink and coffee dyed. So it's really pretty. And in this pocket, I've got a piece of ephemera that's folded. So there's lots of journaling space in this little journal. You could use it as an add-on to a pre-made junk journal or a junk journal that you're working on. You could put it into a pocket if you have a big junk journal. You could send it out in Happy Mail. You could pop it into an Easter basket or give it as a sweet little thank you gift. There's lots of things that you could do with this sweet little mini junk journal. So let me show you how I made it and we're going to start from the very beginning. So this is the paper pad. I know it's available because I've recently purchased it. I purchased it from Hobby Lobby. That's where I purchased it from. It is cardstock. It is only um, printed on one side, not two. It is from the Paper Studio, and the name of this is Vintage Floral, and they are 6 inches by 6 inch square. So what I did was, I took my paper, and I'm just going to show you one of them. I took it out, and I brought in my coffee slurry. So here's my little coffee slurry right here, and I've got my foam brush and I just put some coffee slurry. Now this is just instant coffee dissolved in water. I like to use different brands of instant coffee. When you go to the store you can look and you can see that the brands are all different colors. The dried crystals are different colors. I like to mix it together. I have no formula you guys. I just put it together and I just make it so that it's the color, once I paint it out on my paper, it's a color that I like. If it's too light, you add more coffee. If it's too dark, you add more water. It's not scientific, it's just, that's just how I do it. So I just simply paint it on, just like that. And then you let it dry, whether you dry it with a heat gun, you let it air dry, however you dry it, you know, you just need to get it dry, obviously. You don't want it to use it when it's wet. Let me set this all down in another location. I'll be right back. All right, so once I start coffee dyeing, I like to coffee dye lots of the papers. So I have a lot of these papers that I've coffee dyed. 
to make the project that we're working on today, that's this one, you could take two different pages and make your little mini journal, or you could take two pages that are exactly the same. And I'm going to go ahead and choose these two right here. So I'm going to put this aside. And what you want to do is first, as you can see with this one, it was very kind of plain. It was pink. It was similar to this. And I went ahead and I decided to stamp on it. So I have a little stamp that just has words and kind of a mailing emblem on it. I don't know where I got this from, you guys. I've had it for a long time. But I just thought it would be fun to use a stamp on our paper pad. And so the reason why I'm doing it is because I thought it was kind of plain. And I wanted to just kind of jazz it up a little bit. So I just am using my black stays on. And I'm simply stamping onto my paper and I'm kind of putting it in lines but you, you know you don't have to you can stamp it however you want you can use whatever stamp you want maybe you don't want to use a stamp maybe you've chosen a paper that's a little busier that maybe isn't going to look good with a stamp on it but I kind of thought it was cute now I started making the envelope with this one and that's why it's a little folded but that's okay because I really need to stamp it first before I fold it up into an envelope. So I'm stamping away here and I'm almost finished. Just a couple more rows and it doesn't matter if the stamp doesn't turn out perfect. I kind of like it when it's not perfect. I know a lot of people struggle and they want it to be just perfect. I kind of like it when it's not perfect. So there we go. It's all ready to create an envelope. Now, you don't need a special machine to make an envelope. Let me show you how I do it. So, let's bring this one in right here. This is the 6x6, six six, right? And I'm just looking at it. I think I want this part to be my flap. I'll have to remember that. I think I'll put a little X right here. That's going to be the top for my flap. And I've got a ruler. I'm going to put it so that the print side is down. And I'm going to take my ruler and place the points right here, up and down this way. And I'm going to line the point right up with the line of my grid, my grid mat. I'm going to use it to help me keep this straight because I don't want to have a wonky envelope. So by keeping it straight, you will you will have better luck at not making a wonky envelope. Taking my pencil and just putting a little mark right here. I'm not going all the way down. I just need a little mark right there in the center. I'm going to turn it to the other two points. Line it up on a line. Bring in my, um, my ruler and just place it at the tips. And a tip. Oh, this yeah that's right I thought it moved but it hadn't and then I'm going to make a little mark as well so now you can see that there is an X it's right here I did it very lightly I think you can still see it okay so then what you want to do is you want to take this is my flap this is what I decided is my top you want to take one of your points and put it right at the intersection of your two marks increase it well so it's right at the intersection I'm going to take the other one right across from it and line it up so they're point point to point and then crease it well this is the one with the little X so that's my flap so this is going to be the bottom so I'm going to turn it this way and the reason why I'm turning it this way first I'm going to see if I'm pretty straight not bad I'm going to kind of start curling it up just so I can get the idea because it's stiff. It's cardstock anyway and that's double layered. I'm going to take this point and this point and I'm going to lay it on this line. So I'm going to line it up on this line. So I'm going to try to keep my envelope straight. 
I'm going to pull this up and this point I'm going to choose one of the lines to line it up with. So this point is lined up with the dotted line and this point is lined up with the dotted line. And then I'm simply going to give it a crease and I'm going to use my bone folder and I'm going to crease it well. Just like that. Alrighty, so now it's starting to look like an envelope. This point right here, I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to try to keep it straight across. I'm going to uh, crease it well, and then I'm going to turn it back on itself. So it's like that. Now it's definitely looking like an envelope. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side. We're going to take this point and this point, and we're going to pull it down, and we're going to make that point fold on the same line as the other side. Each side, we're using our grid marks so that we can keep our envelope straight. So there's our little envelope. Pretty doggone cute, isn't it? Now what I want to do is I want to open this up and right here you're going to have a piece of pie. <laughs> I'm going to call it a piece of pie. So I'm going to highlight it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. See that little piece of pie right there? You have four of those here, 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 and here. And we're simply going to take our scissors and we're going to trim that out. Now I like to trim so that the fold is part of what I cut out. As you can see, you can see the where I um, inked it. So I cut it out a little larger than the piece of pie that is shown with the folds. I make it a little bit bigger. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. And so you want to do all four. Okay, I didn't do a very good job on that one. There we go, much better. Now I'm going to glue this little tiny flap down. I'm going to use my art glitter glue and I'm going to add my glue and glue it down. Now if you ink, this is when you'll want to start inking everything. And you'll want to also get your eraser and erase your X that you use to fold everything. So we need to get rid of that. Whoa, don't want to knock that over. And now I'm going to grab my ink. I'm going to, um, I don't know what I put here it is. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fold this one as well. And then I'll be back and we'll have two already made, inked, and ready to go. And I'll show you the next step. All right, so we have both of our envelopes and they're in this stage right here. I do want to say that after you make your first envelope, pay attention to how much you folded up here on the last two flaps. When you made your pie shape, you need to pay attention to how much you folded it up because you need to fold the exact same way on the second envelope so they match. So you have envelopes that are both the same size. To get envelopes both the same size, you need to pay attention to how much you folded up. Remember when we folded it up? Okay. So the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and let's glue, glue them shut. So my art glitter glue, I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to place my glue here and here and then fold it up on its, on, you know, make an envelope. I was going to say fold it up on itself, but that was a lot of glue, Kathy. Okay, we're going to have a lot of glue probably seeping out, so let me get my little open oh, heavens. Here's one. Sorry, guys. Here. And I'm just going to wipe it because, yeah, there's a lot of glue there. Okay, so we have our nice little envelope. Lovely, wonderful. 
And yes, you're putting the points in and you're putting the one that has the point. This one doesn't have the point folded back up. This one does. This is the bottom. That's the one you're going to add the glue to. So adding our glue and then fold it up to make your envelope shape making the bottom of your envelope. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is you're going to decide what is the front and what is the back. It doesn't matter. Mine are both exactly the same. Seriously. So <clears throat> we're going to take the front one and stick it inside of the back one. So you're sticking the flap inside. So the back's flap is coming around to the front. Let me say that again. You decide which one is going to be the front. I want this one to be my back. I want this one to be the front. You turn it this way. You stick the flap inside this one, the one that's going to be the back. You stick the flap inside there. <laughs> there we go. And the back envelope is going to be your flap that's going to help you close it. Okay, we got that? I think so. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead, actually I'm going to trim this one just a little bit more so it fits in a little easier for me because we're going to add glue to this flap that we're sticking inside the other envelope. We're going to add glue right here. When we add our glue, and we place it in, we're going to make sure that we can still fold it and this flap can go around. You know, it has glue on it, so it might want to keep you from going all the way in. You have to go all the way in, and the good way to check that is you go in with the flap, with the glue, you fold it, and then you fold this over to make sure everything is all lined up, okay? So let's do that. Let's take our glue. You use whatever glue you like. I use the art glitter glue. I'm putting my glue on my flap and you're putting it on the right side, which is going to go right inside of your envelope. Squeeze it just a little bit. It'll help pop it open. Put it in there. Fold it. Line it all up. Wipe it with your towel if you need to, your paper towel. Make sure that will fold, and there we go. You've got your little booklet made from your two envelopes. How cute is that, right? Super cute. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to bring in my dish. Now, let me get my dish here. And I'm not sure what I want. Do I want this colored lace? I thought I did, but I don't think so. Do I want this white lace? It's okay. Do I want this darker lace? Yeah, I like the darker lace. And then let's go ahead and let's glue our lace. I think I'm going to try the other end, see how it's looking. It's folded kind of funny. I'm going to glue this on. And I always like to kind of decide, I want to make my my lace even so I kind of look at the holes and that's how I kind of judge how I'm going to put it on there and keep it straight or you could line it up this way onto a line of your grid and then see if you can line it up so your lace is straight. Now I'm going to bring in my hot glue because it's quick, it's easy, it's great for videos and it allows me to keep going without everything being all sticky and you know what I mean. So I'm going to add my glue right here. You add the glue of your choice and then I'm going to add my lace just like this and I'm going to press it down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a trim. So I'm going to trim it straight up like that and I'm just going to trim it off just like this. All right, that's not bad, that's pretty straight. I'm gonna line this one up the same way since that worked pretty well for me. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here. So I need to add my glue, just like that, and then add my lace. 
pretty good. Press it down. Alrighty, now I'm going to give it a trim. So I'm going to trim it right here so I have a point. And then I'm going to trim it right here. Okay. Very, very cute. Now, do I need to... Nope, that's glued on well. Alrighty, so our envelope journal is going to be turned like this. It's not going to be like this. It's going to be like this. So let's go ahead and grab our sari, or maybe you have um, some twine, or you have baker's twine, or you have whatever it is that you're going to use to close your journal with. This is the time you need to grab it. And I thought that color is beautiful. Now this is from Crimson Heart Studios. I will link her shop down below. She has a wonderful sari, and I think I'm really going to cut this in half. Just like that, and then I'm going to rip it because I don't want it that wide. Well, that's where that sorry sorry comes sewn together in pieces. So I'm going to trim that. I'm going to do it again. I need a longer piece. And so here we go. There we are. Now, what I want to do next, let's see, where's the next? Oh, it's really low. Okay, I don't need to go that much. I can trim it off now. All right, I've got that trimmed. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to find the middle, just like that. I'm going to lay this right on top of my flap where the point is. I'm going to get some of these strings off first, just real quick. I'm gonna, since I ripped it, it's got a few threads. I need to get them off. I think I've gotten them. Maybe one more here. Okay. Find the middle again. There's the middle. Place it right on top where the point is. I'm actually going to move it off of this. I'm going to open it up like this. I don't want to accidentally get my um, wax onto, you know, have it come off. So as you can see here, I kind of brought it down a little further, so about right here is where I'm going to add my wax. And then I'm going to use my, here it is, it looks like a letter. And I'm going to use that stamp. And I probably got it off of Amazon, I don't know, really I don't know guys, but I think I got it off of Amazon. I'm just going to put my wax right on top and it's okay with me if it's a little extra. There we are. Move that off. Here's my little wipe. I'm going to wipe this off. There. I don't want to get wax inside of my melter. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I'm just going to wipe this off right here and set it back in. There we go. Waiting for this wax to dry. There we go. Got a little piece on that lace. There we go. It, it's still a little shiny, so I think it's still a little wet. So, let wiggle come off. Not quite yet. Oh, there it is. Oh my goodness, isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. Now I do have, I do have these pins, and this one's silver, and I do have a gold one. And what are they? This is Office Trend Metallic Color. This one isn't. This is called, yeah it is, Office Trend Metallic. Okay, I don't know where I got these from either. I'm not helpful of that, that department, am I? And I'm actually just going to color the raised portion of the seal. And it just highlights the image that's there. And it's really, it's really a nice touch. As you can see, it highlighted those flowers. And I thought I would use gold on this one, and I could use silver on this one. So I'm just going to highlight right here just so you can see the 
you can really see it in person. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but you can see it really well in person. So there we are. Now let's go ahead and finish inside here. What do I want to decorate further? Now this one inside, let's see, I put a label. So let me grab the labels here and we can definitely pop a label on here. Um, oh, this one's pretty. Let's see how that's going to look on here. Mm, it's okay. Uh, this one looks good. Oh, I like that because there's green grid marks on that one. Let's go ahead and use this one. So because I've inked my envelope, I'm going to go ahead and ink my label as well. Let's put this back over here. I have some of these cute little bows. I bought them off Amazon the other day. And then there's a teal one right here. Let me grab me. There we are. I thought that it would be cute once we get the label glued on here in the front. Pop it on just like that. I thought this might be cute if I put it right here. The other one I had an applique. This one, I had an applique that I added, but I think this would be cute too. So let's use this. And I'm just going to pop it on right down here. I really don't want it to show on the outside, but I want to have it show when you open it up. I think that's sweet. Now, here, this is where you can stick little pieces of ephemera or whatever it is that you would like. But let's add a little bit of journaling paper. So I have some blue dyed paper here. This one has an image of a doily. I have some coffee dyed paper here. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm actually going to move this out of the way too. And I'll be right back and we'll put our papers in. All right, so to measure, <clears throat> excuse me, to measure how big your papers need to be, this is your back cover, this is your front cover. Just place it right here at the crease, and this is three and a half inches wide. So if we make our papers just shy of that, so I'm going to fold it. Let's see here. I can line it up. There's three. There's three and a half. I think that's going to be pretty good. I need to move that down a little bit so I can see. Three and a half, Kathy. Not. I almost did it wrong. Three and a half. I'm looking to see how close we're coming to the, um, sorry guys, I have to try to find it, there it is, there's three and a half, it's a little over there, okay, we're going to go just shy of three and a half, so I'm going to crease it, now I'm actually going to test it before I cut it, I'm going to place it in here, and is it going to show? No, that's very nice. Now I'm going to just make it shorter right here. Pull it up just a little bit. And I'm going to mark it with my pencil to be about, I think I want it to be about right there. I'm going to use that one for my template. So we might as well make it easier for us to do right here. So that's at four. I'm going to bring in my large guillotine and I'm going to cut this down this way. So this is the how it's going to fit into our little journal. And I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut it right here where our mark is. And then I'm going to stack this one on top of the other and mark it. And then I'm going to cut this right here. And those are two pages that are going to fit in our journal. So let's check it out to make sure that it's going to work the way we think it is. 
way I think it is. Yeah, that'll be perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, that's two, I get two out of a page. One, two, three, four, five, six. So either I have two, I'm going to have two um, coffee dyed and one of the blue. So I'm going to fold these. I'm going to cut them just like this. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to get it sewed in. All right, so now you have all your pages ready to go in to your little journal. Now what I like I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my corner rounder, which I can't seem to see right now. What on earth has happened to my corner rounder? Oh, I have to find it. All right, so I found my corner rounder. It's not where I always put it. <laughs> so I've got my two pages together, and I'm simply going to round the corners of the not the side that's folded, the other end. I should say the other end. And I'm simply going to round them. That one didn't cut very well, did it? There we go. Maybe. Okay. And I've got two more to go. Rounding those corners. I don't know. I just think it looks a little softer. Now you have to decide how you want them to go in. I think I want brown, the coffee dyed first, then a blue, then maybe two coffee dyed, and another blue, and a coffee dyed. I think that's how I'd like mine to go. And you're going to, now I've done this so many times on camera, but I'm going to do it again because I don't know how many of you are new and how many of you have been with me for a while, but I'm going to open it up to the center of my signature. That's what we just made. Our pages are called signatures. And I'm just going to pin them right into it. Now, I have a strip of coffee dyed paper. This is a little over two. Usually I use an inch, but that's okay. It's just a scrap. I'm going to mark it the length of my journal. I just marked it, and I'm going to bring in my scissors. And I'm simply going to cut it off just where I marked it, just like that. And the reason why you want to do that, I'm checking again to see if that's the correct length, yes, is what you want to do with this little strip is you're going to fold it the long way in half. And then you're going to fold it the two ends together like this. And then you're going to fold the two ends together again like this. And you're going to crease it well. I'm going to use my awl here to really crease it. Alrighty, you're going to open it back up, and where the creases intersect, you're going to put a little circle. So you have three little circles. You're going to place that right in your spine of your little journal here, and you're going to paper clip it in. Now, what you want to do, there's two paper clips. <laughs> we just need one. <laughs> and now what I want to do is I'm going to get my all. I'm going to get my piece of packing material from something that came in the mail. I'm going to get my book binding thread. This is wax thread, you buy it on Amazon, it's book binding thread. And I'm going to measure across my little journal. I'm going to say one, two, three. Now if you want to add dangles, you would say four. I'm not going to add any dangles this time. I'm going to thread my needle right here so it's all ready to go. I'm going to put my book binding material underneath the spine of my little journal here. I'm going to hold up the ends. I'm going to stick my awl straight up and down. And I'm going to give it a punch. I'm going to go all the way through. I'm going to do it again at the next circle and the next circle. You're going to be putting three holes in here three holes. Okay, now you're going to take out your little sheet that, that you used so you didn't have to measure. I'm going to check my holes. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go in the center. I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to go in whatever holes next. Doesn't matter. Pull it through. The last hole, you go all the way down. You put it through. Pull it through checking to make sure it's not caught on anything. Let's go back in the center. Just like that, you're going to make sure that 
it is on the opposite side. It's going through that thread again like it likes to do. There we are. You're going to go on the opposite side of the center thread. So you have two on either side, right like that. Two on either side. Checking to make sure it's not caught, especially not caught on your closure. You're going to trim it. You're going to give it a little pull, not so much that you're ripping your holes, you don't want to do that. Tie a nice knot. If you're using embroidery thread, you're going to need to leave this open and put a little dab of glue on that knot because it will work its way out. And we're going to remove our little clips just like this. And we're going to look at how this has turned out. Oh my goodness, aren't those pages lovely in here? That is perfect. I love this little journal. We made it all from our 6 by 6 paper pad and added just a little bit of colored copy paper, a little bit of lace, and a closure. Oh my goodness, I think these are adorable. Whether you're going to give it as a gift, pop it in an Easter basket, um, put it in a journal. It's absolutely adorable. Don't you think? Oh, I do. I think they're special. Let's have our drawing for Happy Mail. What is hashtag Kathy Sewing Happiness all about? It's you helping me spread happiness through simple acts of kindness, letting someone line of traffic because no one is letting anyone in. I don't get that. <laughs> but just let one in. Don't let six or seven, you'll get yourself in trouble. Just let somebody in. Um, letting someone go ahead of you at the grocery store because you have 20 items and they have two. Simple acts of kindness don't have to cost us anything. But we don't know what other people are going through. And sometimes just a simple act of kindness will lift their spirits up enough for them to just keep going. That's what we need to do, you guys. We need to just keep going. So if you'd like to enter into the Happy Mail drawing, that's what this is. These people entered in last Sunday, and now their names are in this drawing. You can tell me your act of kindness in the comment section. Make sure you're in the most recent Kathy Sewing Happiness. It's every Sunday. Um, if you wish not to tell me your act of kindness, that's okay, too. Your entry words are spreading happiness. That's your two entry words to enter. Or you can tell us your act of kindness. I will write your name down. I'll put you in the fishbowl. You entered this Sunday. You check back next Sunday to see if your name has been pulled out of the fishbowl. If your name has been pulled out of the fishbowl, please check down below. It's going to tell you how you're going to get your um, address to me. I do request that you don't say in the comment section, oh, congratulations, blah, 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 for winning because they see their name, they don't watch the video, and then they don't know how to get their name to me, and then they get upset because they didn't get their happy mail. So if please don't say who has won. Also, it's a lot of fun to hear your name called, and you don't know who's won. That's also fun. So help me out and not say who has won. So here we are. This is the winner of the person who was, will receive happy mail if you get your address to me. So who has won? Betty Webster. Betty, you're the winner of Happy Mail this week from me to you as my way of paying it forward. Oh, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now.